Hello everybody and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is my video blog series where I go through all the latest and greatest uh, features from the Microsoft Data Platform. Today is going to be episode number two, SQL Server 2016 and the new feature called Temporal Tables. I'm Warner Chavez, SQL Server MCM and MVP and I work at Pythian. Make sure you visit us at pythian.com. So what are temporal tables? Well. It's a new feature is going to be introduced in SQL Server 2016 and it allows for live querying of data from the past. So if you enable this, SQL Server will automatically capture historical uh, changes of any type of records on the table where you enabled this uh, feature. So this is very useful obviously for, uh, for example if you want to go back in time to do some forecasting, if you want to go back in time to do some trending, if by mistake somebody does a uh, let's say an update and forgets to put on the work clause um, and you will need to roll it back really easy, well you're gonna have the past uh, value of the record right there already loaded on SQL Server, it will make this type of uh, mistake fixing uh, pretty much trivial. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of other uh, use cases that people will be able to find, for example, for data warehousing or slowly changing dimensions, etc., etc. Now, another very nice thing about this new feature is that it's completely T-SQL integrated. It's not like a different set of store procedures that you're going to have to learn, kind of how uh, change data captured was implemented, where there's these store procedures that can make working with it a little bit more cumbersome. Not in this case. It's all implemented in T-SQL. So if you're an experienced DBA, if you're an experienced developer, this is going to be really easy uh, to pick up. So let's go into the demo, and you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about. Let's go. Okay, so here we are with uh, a release of SQL Server 2016. As you guys can see, this is 13.0 uh, CTP. And here is the syntax for creating a temporal table. As you guys can see, it's very similar to a normal create table. There's only uh, some differences that I'm going to highlight now. First, you have to specify the start time column. This is the column that's going to track time uh, for the beginning of when this record started being valid. Uh, it has to be a date time too. You can name it anything you want. Um, usually the examples on MSDN are all using this his start time name so that's what I wanted to use on the demo as well because you might be following examples somewhere else and it's likely that it might have that name but you could really call it anything you want. Uh, this end time as well. So the second column is going to track the timestamp of when that particular version of the record stopped. Uh, being valid, right? And it also has to be a date time too. And as you can see, I have to specify these uh, generated as row end or as row start. Also, take a look here. There's this uh, keyword hidden. So these columns can be hidden or not hidden. What that means is that they might show up when you do a select star from the table or not. And then we'll see that on the demo. And I have to create a primary key that's necessary if you're creating a temporal table. I'm just using an identity one one. Finally, we have to specify the option system versioning equals on, and we have to specify a name for the history table. We don't really have to specify the name, but it is recommended because otherwise you get one of those ugly uh, good names that are auto-generated by SQL Server. So I recommend you just specify something that is going to be easier for you to work with um, when you're working with temporal tables. So let's just run this. We'll create our table and that completes successfully. So if we go to Object Explorer here, so you guys can see I have a database called HR and here are all the tables. I can refresh this now and we can see I now have a system version table called Salary Temporal and if I go into Salary Temporal and open this up now in Management Studio, you guys can see Management Studio is now aware of uh, system version tables as well. So it will put right here under the Salary Temporal table the name of like the child table that is skipping the history. And it will mark it as well, just showing that it's a history table. Okay. All right, so let's look at how we work with a temporal table once it's created. So I'm on here on this HR database. I already have a table called salary inside the HR database. So all I'm going to do is load now uh, the salary temporal table with the data I already had on the salary table. So let me run that now. So I have 5,000 rows I just inserted into it. The first thing we're going to look at here is 
If I do a select star from salary temporal, run that now, you guys can see I get four columns, record ID, employee ID, salary, hire date. Right? Remember I set the columns to be hidden, so on a select star they're not going to show up. However, now I'm going to call them out explicitly with a column list on the select. So I'm going to put the four, um, sorry, employee ID, salary, hire date, and also the sys start time assist end time. So if I call them out explicitly, then I can see them in the result set. You guys can see here, for example, these are the current images of these records, and we can see they have a sys start time of 921, uh, that's September 21st, that's the date for today, and the server time where I'm doing this. And the sys end time is just sometime in 9999, basically a kind of like a um, a positive infinity set up by the system to mark the uh, the not end valid time for the rows when we haven't specified one. And this time obviously is the time that I just inserted it uh, the rows into. So as you can see, if they're hidden, if I do a select star, you can't see them. If you call them out explicitly, you can see them. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is let's generate some um, record versions. So I'm gonna update all the. Uh, I'm gonna give everybody a 10% increase in the salary just because I'm feeling uh, pretty generous today. And I'm just gonna do it with uh, the employee IDs that are less than 10, so it's gonna be easy for us to track it on the results and see what goes on with the temporal. Um, so let's just do this update, should update nine records. So there we go. Now what we're going to do here, let's go through uh, the syntax of doing a temporal query. So I'm going to specify two different start times. I'm going to specify this a variable called add start time and it's going to be a um, basically from right now give me uh, the past, the start time is going to be 300 seconds ago, so more or less five minutes. And then I'm going to give the end time basically just right now. I obviously created a new uh, record version by running this update on those nine records. So I can do a select employee ID, salary, hire date, and the two ta uh, time tracking columns from salary temporal. Now I have to specify for system time. This is uh, part of the new construct that comes with the from statement and then the times that I'm interested in. Now there's more than one time predicate. There's a time predicate called as off that we're going to look into uh, here on the demo. There's this one between. There's two more that you guys can uh, explore um, on your own if you go on books and lines. Basically from to, so from start time to end time and then there's another one that's like contained in start time and end time and those they basically work with uh, different variations of the time predicates if it's you know bigger than the start time or bigger than an equal than the start time and and so on and so forth okay so um, let's see uh, let's run this right now. We're going to have a declare at start time, declare at end time, and then we're going to see everything that's been created uh, since those times. So if I run this now and I go to the results, you'll see every single employee ID has two records, right? So what this means is that I have the uh, current one right now, the one that has the start time of um, 1508 and the end time in the infinity. And I also have the previous one, the one that was between 1507 when I started the demo and 1508 when I did the update. And you see all of them are just like that. Okay. Now, that is, uh, that is a way to get all the images between a set period of time. But we can also uh, go, go back in time and just see the images of a particular moment in time. So I'm going to have the same start time and end time and I'm going to run these two queries but the second one is with as off just the end time. So give me the uh, record version as off uh, and the time and it's going to be just this time uh, the end time is going to be the get date. So give me them as they are right now. now if I run this you go to the results. We'll see the first one because we're specifying uh, the between. We get the two images of the start time and the end time. Um, and the other one because we're just doing ass off right now, then we just get the pretty much latest uh, version of the record. Obviously, ass off could be, for example, sometime in the past. So you would get that one record image that was valid on that one time in the past. So very cool stuff that you can do with this new functionality and new query semantics that we get uh, from this uh, new functionality. 
And if we go back and we just query the base table without specifying a time predicate, what we'll see is that we get just the current version of the record, right? Without a time predicate, we will always just see the recent, most recent version of the record. Okay. Now, something interesting as well is that the salary history, the history table, can be queried directly as well. So if I go in and do, run this select, we can see on the results, I have the past images here just by querying directly. So if you don't want to do um, uh, time uh, time query with like the actual time predicates and you just want to go in and straight up try to query the history table directly, you can do that as well if, if that's what you really want to do. So the information can be directly queried from the history table as well just like how I did right here. Okay. Now something interesting though, if you try to change the history table directly, like right here, I'm trying to do an update of the salary history table, execute that, I'll get a message, expectedly so, that says you cannot update records in a temporal history table, right? That would destroy uh, the integrity of, um, of the history table. Now to finish up the demo, let's just look at uh, removing and doing some cleanup of, this, uh, of the temporal table. So if I try to drop it, it's going to give me an error. And it's just going to say you can't drop this table because it's not supported on a system version temporal table. So as long as the system version is on, then you're not, it's not going to allow me to drop it. So first I have to turn it off. So I'm going to turn it off just with a simple alter table statement. So that completes. Now look what happens with our tables when I turn that off. And I'm going to zoom in right here. So you can see salary temporal it doesn't specify being temporal anymore. But interestingly as well, salary history has been pulled out from being a child table of salary temporal, and now it's a completely separate uh, table on its own. So turning system version on pretty much just um, not only freed salary temporal, but also turned uh, salary history into a completely separate table. So to actually do the full cleanup, now I have to drop both salary temporal and finally drop both salary history. Okay. All right, so I hope you got a good overview of what temporal tables are about. Uh, you saw how easy the syntax is. We just need to specify uh, some keywords on a couple of uh, the columns, the start and the end column, specify the history table, and just you know turn it on. And that's pretty much it. We're ready to go. So very easy to work with. Uh, there's also a lot of different time predicates that they've introduced, right, to pretty much cover all the cases of time boundaries that you might be interested in. So we have as, off, from, between, contained. Make sure for sure uh, if you have the CTP or even if you don't have the CTP, Azure already has an image with SQL Server 2016. So you can go in, uh, use some test data like I just did, and play around with the time predicates and get familiar with this uh, with this new feature alright now uh, thanks for watching we're gonna be putting up more videos uh, very soon and stay tuned for our next episode have a good day